Okay. Um, yeah, where did I leave off? So, uh, a little while ago, the wife comes up to me and says, uh, uh, you know, the, two of our three kids are almost grown and uh, ready for a change. I'm sick of the cold. I live in Detroit. And uh, why don't we live on a boat? Really? Did I hear that correctly? Did I have mushrooms for breakfast? Am I hallucinating? Did you just say, live? Yeah, let's live on a boat. All right. Well, um, my better half has never lived on a boat before and has uh, some interesting ideas about what that's about. I have both power and sail. <clears throat> so I started looking around and at the used boat market. Um, started reading all kinds of forums. I uh, have, I'm lucky that I have uh, human resources I uh, could draw on. My mother's husband is a New Zealander, and uh, any of you out there that might know New Zealanders, I mean, if you look at their DNA under a microscope, you actually see a 12-meter sailing yacht. There's no double helix. Hey, it's in the blood in New Zealand. Um, so I had a very good, uh, you know, good bench, so to speak, uh, to uh, learn about the process, what I should be looking for, what I should run away from, so forth and so on. And um, I found on Craigslist a 1966, is that was 66 or 68, uh, Tartan 27. Uh, looked, well, everything looks great on Craigslist, but I had a feeling, so I checked it out and I had it surveyed. And structurally, it's a tank. No blisters, no water inside the hull. Three quarter inch pure resin fiberglass. Really? Really? I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Um, yet one more reason why I've got to get out on the water. I hate driving. Um, so, 50 year old boat. What am I thinking? Here's the thing. Uh, for those of you that don't know, and if you're starting the process, you'll learn as you read through the, uh, the forums. And there, there's some really good ones out there. Uh, and a lot of other really good web blogs. That's what kind of gave me the idea for why don't I do one too. Here's the thing. Fiberglass boats, um, especially with sailboats, anything built prior to 1973 is probably going to be in pretty decent shape if it was moderately looked after. And the reason for this is, is the following. Resin is a byproduct of petroleum, of oil, the oil refinery process. And um, any of you that are my age or simply up on their history know that prior to 1973, OPEC did not exist. 1973, uh, OPEC got together, raised the price of gas, uh, or oil, excuse me, gas and everything else that is made from oil got a lot more expensive and this included resin. So, boat companies, in order to make a profit uh, and keep the business model viable, started uh, cutting, well, I don't want to say cutting corners, but they couldn't use uh, resin in the amounts that they were used to using. So, this is when the hulls on boats and the decks started to become cored, which meant that instead of just putting one layer of fiberglass and resin on top of another, there was something in the middle, either foam or balsa wood or plywood, and which would get wrapped. Um, this made for a lighter boat, um, but it also made for a less durable boat because boats flex, they're under tremendous uh, forces, out of the water, especially sailboats, because they're taking the load of the wind, you know, in the rig, and, you know, that flexing over time, you're going to get cracks in the fiberglass, the you know, micro needs of water are going to get into this, just like concrete. Um, I live in Detroit, Michigan. One of the roads I live close to was recently repaved two years ago, and already we've got cracks in the concrete. You know? And that's just with temperature changes. That's got nothing to do with flex at all. Um, anyhow, anything prior to 1973 uh, tends to be built much heavier and much stronger. Uh, and even then, there's still a couple of soft spots on the deck of this boat. 
uh, which doesn't uh, isn't send me running for the hills. The hull is sound, and uh, the rest of it just looks like it needs um, some tender loving care. I did not have the engine surveyed. Uh, this is why um, I did not know that when you get a surveyor, uh, you have to research that almost as much as you have to research buying the boat. So I spent 300 bucks for someone to come out and tell me basically what I already knew uh, because of my own research, that uh, the hull is very thick and very sound, there's no water in it. I missed the soft spots on the deck, but he couldn't tell me anything real specifically on the critical areas of the boat, like the engine, and just, I mean, he couldn't turn the engine on. I saw the engine get turned on, but he didn't check the oil, and he didn't send the oil, the fluids out for uh, any kind of analysis, he didn't check the uh, rigging for me at all, all just cursory, you know, basically what I had done on my own, uh, which was to check for signs of corrosion and fatigue in the uh, deck hardware. Uh, no one's been up the mast, so I'm buying, you know, the mast, I'm buying on faith, and the, the motor, I'm buying on faith. Um, the plumbing as well, you got to take the owner's word for it that the plumbing is, uh, uh, is new. He said he put it in a couple of years ago. The sails I checked out on my own, and they're newer. Um, the background is still st uh, stiff. Uh, there's a little bit of, um, there's one seam of the jenny that's uh, beginning to fray and come out, uh, but that is minor, I can handle that. Uh, so the sails look pretty good, um, and so I'm thinking, all right, uh, not a bad candidate. The guy wanted uh, 2500 for it, which I thought, okay, for a 27-foot boat, with a three-quarter keel and a board engine and uh, uh, sleeping space, overnight sleeping space, galley, and uh, you know, a head, a working head. I never thought I'd be able to do that. Uh, well, hell, I never thought I'd be able to do that. So I'm all excited, and I, I go back to my uh, stepdad and. Uh, promptly sends me texts, messages, with pictures of 27-foot O-days, and uh, asked me to look at a McGregor or a trailer sailor. I know he's, he's, really, he's looking out for my best interests, and you know, I know I have stars in my eyes about the boat, but uh, he says, and I quote, it's a 50-year-old boat. It's going to sink. It's my best New Zealander accent. So, Jeff, I really like this boat. He says, yes, but it's 50 years old, Mr. Fuck. Oh, great. All right. Well, yeah. So, I'm kind of going against, you know, the conservative council in my family. Um, but it's a nice-looking boat. It's pretty. It's got. It's, it's designed by Sparkman Stevens. Uh, it's got a very classic uh, feel to it. Doesn't feel like one of those plastic Tupperware mass-produced, you know, boats that you know got started to get uh, were built in the '70s and the '80s. And it's solid. Uh, so I'm looking at this as, as an article I read uh, a little while ago uh, about the pitfalls of boat restoration and the money that you're going to spend on it and the, the misconceptions people have about just what it takes. And uh, they offered this as a slight exception to most of the horror stories that you'll read about. If you can find a boat, and they referred to it as, um, I think this was in Yachting Magazine, I can't remember, but they referred to it as a sailing restoration, which meant that if you can find a boat that basically needs a lot of sweat equity in order to you know, stop whatever um, decay is occurring, and uh, aesthetically at least, bring the boat back up to, uh, you know, what you're used to seeing in a, in a usable boat. Um, if it's saleable, which means if you can get some use out of it, while you're doing that, um, then it's worth the risk, and I think that uh, this boat falls into that category. I'm not going to be you know, rebuilding uh, the hull. I'm not going to be you know, re-glassing anything below uh, you know, the deck or 
those soft spots I ended up have to take care of, but uh, you know, nothing major or structural. The engine did turn on, it took some coaxing, um, but it's winter time where I live. And uh, once it got on, you know, no smoke, no, uh, didn't smell any burning oil, didn't hear any uh, suspicious sounds, nothing like that. The, the, Adam, the Atomic 4 has a good reputation, uh, but it is 50 years old. So my thoughts are if I can get a season out of this, um, out of the, uh, the engine as is, what I'll do is uh, next year, or over the winter time next year, I will either rebuild it, Buddy of mine I work with uh, sharing this, and uh, he goes, uh, so, oh, you, you know how to rebuild an engine? He says, fuck no. 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 I don't. And anybody that I tell them I'm going to do this, they all start laughing, because apparently I don't have a reputation for being very handy. Um, but we're going to find out. I, I like to think that uh, uh, you, if you're motivated, you have uh, good reason for learning something, you can learn just about anything. You know, I was lousy at math in high school, but I taught myself how to program. I, need, I had to do it. Anyhow, um, so we'll see what, uh, you know, what the summer brings in terms of the engine. Uh, if I don't rebuild it, I really like what I'm reading about repowering boats with electric motors. Um, just in terms of the uh, cost effectiveness of it, a new diesel engine is, I, I can't justify spending between eight and $14,000 on a brand new, even a used diesel engine is uh, very expensive um, for a boat that uh, the owner's asking uh, 2500 oh by the way, I got them down to 1650 so 1650 that's a pretty good investment up front, anything that I put into it you know, afterwards, uh, you know, about this condition, I've seen them, uh, you know, online, people are asking between, uh, probably depending on how close to Bristol they are, uh, you know, 5,000 up to, there's one in Stewart, Florida, or Stewart, might have been Fort Pierce, that guy wants uh, 18,000 for it, I think, but, I mean, it's like looking at a 1966 Jag that's been rubbed with a diaper for the last 20 years. I mean, the thing is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I don't feel too bad about uh, pumping a few thousand dollars into this over a few years, especially if I'm going to be using it. So the idea is we, um, we do that. We introduce the wife. We dip a toe into the water, so to speak, in terms of introducing her to sailing. And uh, in the meantime, I'll get to get out of the water. I don't think we're going to be losing too much money. Uh, but... Uh, you know, if uh, she gets into it, then we can reasonably start looking long term at getting something uh, larger, more uh, comfortable, and something that's even a blue water boat. So that if it, you know, want to do some extended ocean cruising one day, be in a position to do that. Oh, and the other thing is, I'm excited about there being uh, things that I need to do on the boat so that I just learn the systems. Just because, you know, I mean, I know how to sail. Um, I'm comfortable on the Great Lakes. I haven't done, uh, I mean, navigation is all electronic anyway, but I don't know how to use a, se a sextant. I haven't taken any navigational courses. Those are things I'm going to have to do. Um, but I'm comfortable in terms of boat handling. You know, I can dock a boat. I can take a boat out. I can sail it. I, can, I, I know when it's, you know, it's overpowered, when it's underpowered. I can, I can do all those things. Uh, but that's only half the nut. The other half is you've got to make sure that if something goes wrong with the systems in your boat, you're going to be able to handle it. You'll be able to handle it with no help. You know, maybe in, uh, you know, 78 foot seas, which are not unusual on the Great Lakes. Um, I want to know, I want to have the confidence that if something happens, you know, if this engine stops, in the middle of the lake, uh, and I need it to get into the harbor, I can't sail into uh, safe harbor, that I'll know what to look for, you know, that I'll know to, how to check the filter, how to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, maybe some uh, dirt or some algae got swashed around while the boat was, you know, being tossed around by the waves and uh, the gasoline, uh, 
I've been told by the surveyor I'm probably going to have to have a new impeller uh, put in. Um, but, you know, I want to be able to know how to do that. Aside from the cost savings, um, it's, I mean, just the, the safety factors in there. And I don't want to take my family out on a boat and have, let them have a nightmare experience uh, because um, they're not used to you know, the heavy seas. Uh, and when if an engine goes out or the electronics go out, you know, because uh, you know, maybe the previous owner connected, uh, uh, you know, wrapped uh, a wire and electrical tape instead of uh, you know, sealing it correctly. Um, you know, it shorts out the, uh, the circuit board. I want to be able to know why something happened and how to prevent it or not prevent things from happening in the future. So I'm looking at the boat as being also a teaching boat as well. Um, bear in mind, I know nothing about electronics. I'm owning up on my YouTube videos. A lot of good stuff. And the way that I want to present this blog is not that I'm an expert, but kind of use me as a cautionary tale. Uh, I want to get as many blunders and screw-ups as I can on camera, and maybe buying the boat is a screw-up. We won't know until we do it. Um, because I will say this, it, it is a, a buyer's market, and I think it's going to be a buyer's market for a long time. There are a lot of... Uh, fiberglass boats out there that people are trying to get rid of um, that are, you know, have been listed for a long, long time. Uh, I was surprised I was able to get this guy below 2000 but, you know, he got himself into a new uh, French boat, a Centurion. I can't pronounce the manufacturer. It starts with a W. Uh, but he's into a new boat, and this one is just, he's just hemorrhaging cash with it because he has to pay the cost for storage, and uh, and the longer it sits there, the less valuable it gets. So, you know, as long as he's not, you know, keeping up with it. Um, and I'll be in his position one day, I'm sure, when I'm trying to uh, get into something larger. You know, in, in the search, yeah, I found a 42 Morgan, uh, another Spartan Stephen, Mark II. Gorgeous boat just out of my reach right now. The, that couple listed there is for three, and that's up here on uh, the Great Lakes as well. Freshwater boat. Um, probably the same sort of a deal. I mean, based on the photos, and I know that photos are suspects. you got to look at those with a grain of salt, but based on the, some things you can't hide in pictures. The boat's been looked after. I mean, it's, it's in good shape. It's an old boat, 1972, 473. And... Beautiful lines on it, gorgeous boat. You know, I'm having an orgasm just looking at it. And uh, they listed it at 30,000. It's been, you know, on, uh, I, think it was, I saw it on Boat Trader, I think. And they had to come down 10,000. Uh, and it still hasn't moved. Um, just there's, there's a glut of fiberglass used boats out there which is good for the buyer, and right now I'm a buyer, so we'll see, and um, I'll share my uh, mishaps and successes with you, and if they can help you in your decision-making process, and your, uh, where you go and take your life in terms of these things, then uh, great, I will, uh, I will check in when I have something uh, new to offer, thanks for watching, everyone, bye-bye.